Good morning. This is Daniel Posney, and this is Shifting Perspectives. And this is going to be about 10 to 15 minutes on the topic of how do we get our needs met? And before I get started on that, I just want to get the, the marketing and advertising out of the way about what's coming up. Um, so we've got uh, Valor and I have a five day couples retreat on Oahu, uh, December 6th through the 10th. And it's only gonna be room for four couples. And it's really gonna be amazing. I'm really looking forward to it, to have Valerie and I together to do this teaching. Um, there's gonna be daily workshops and practices, yoga, meditation, qigong, uh, relationship dynamics and tools, um, conscious communication, uh, couples, shamanic breath work, sound healing journey, emotional trauma healing, and intimacy rituals and practices. And um, they're gonna have like excursions on Hawaii and tours and trips and stuff like that. So, and then food and then your own private room. And I'm really looking forward to people really getting immersed into something much deeper than normally what happens with um, a couples retreat and normally what happens with relationship counseling. So if you know me, I, you know that I like going deeper than what normally people go into so we can get to the root of the issue and so we can resolve that and then get back, get, you know, maybe for the first time in the true happiness and love. So uh, let's see, what's the next thing we got at our house, which we call the Hummingbird House in September. Uh, on September 22nd, there's a spiritual retreat day. Um, there's all kinds of teaching and meditation and uh, breath work and sound and just like a, a real fun time on the property here. This just this place is just ma magical. If you go to the hummingbirdhouse.org, you'll see pictures of our place. It's just stunning. Uh, and then the next two days is going to be a relationship weekend, and you could do the whole thing, or you could do one or the other um, on the relationship. Uh, weekend there's going to be sharing and listening relationship wheel and tools and compassion and deeper um, understanding conscious communication forgiveness and greater intimacy and closeness so that's that and then and september also a lot of stuff happening in september um valerie and i, and I are going to start doing cancer support sessions so it's going to be um, the first, second, third, and fourth Wednesday, every Wednesday um, at 11 a.m. And the first Wednesday is sound healing with Valerie. The second Wednesday is emotional healing with me. And then the third Wednesday is breathwork with Valerie or me. And then the fourth Wednesday is going to be a, a guest speaker. So there's that. And then, of course, there's the men's retreat in October from the 12th to the 15th. That's four days in Sedona. And if you've heard about the, how the retreat happened last time, um, really looking forward to that one. Get, get together with some guys and really go into some places that we maybe have never gone before or into a, a higher place that we've gone. And it's all about um, feeling heard and understood and cared for and uh, talking about the dynamics of relationship and how to heal that and how to make your relationship and your intimacy much higher um, than you thought. So there's that. And uh, I have to tell you that I'm, I'm a little bit actually low energy today because I'm on um, day three of water fast. So feeling really good, um, lost a few pounds and kind of feel, I guess I feel kind of like tighter, more in my body, but I am kind of low energy. So I'm gonna break that fast today and uh, enjoy my breakfast. So that's why uh, I have a doctor's appointment today and I'm gonna go get some breakfast. So that's why this is so early. So, all right, how do we get our needs met? I, I feel like the, the first thing that we ever need to do is realize that we, we are not getting our needs met. And you know, one of the toughest things I've ever seen is something I saw a few days ago in a session with a guy. And he's very successful, African-American man, very successful in business, uh, making lots of money. Uh, his parents are very successful. He grew up in kind of, a, in his words, a privileged childhood, which is awesome. 
and I'm so happy for him. But when I talked to him, I realized that he, he has a lot of intelligence, but he doesn't have a lot of emotional intelligence about how he feels and how she, his wife feels and that kind of thing. And, and he uses intelligence to um, assert himself and um, to be on top of the, the communication. But he's, the, the cool thing is that he's very receptive. Like he'll, he'll listen and he'll say, oh, wow, okay, I'll look at that. Um, but the, the worry for me, I guess not a worry, the concern for me is that um, he'll use the intelligence to say he's fine. And I know that some people do that and they, they, they say they know what love is and I know they don't know. I, I have that feeling that they don't really know. I didn't know what love is, was. I didn't know what, what being in love really was. I know what lust was, I knew what attachment was. I didn't know what my own needs were. And so I, if I didn't know what my own needs were, how could I line up with, with love? So that's the toughest thing is to, is to realize that you may not know what your needs are. And to believe that um, everything is okay, and you've got enough money to take care of yourself. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the toughest one when you got a lot of money that you, you can buy what you need. But it's sometimes it's the people that um, don't have a lot that um, have a different perspective. So this guy was an example of that. He had everything and uh, had, a, had a pretty good relationship with his wife, but it was, I could see it was more like a business. They had a lot of business relationship and um, intelligence. But um, this, thing, this thing that we were going into, this getting your needs met, knowing what love is and that kind of thing and boundaries was, was pretty new. So again, the first thing is to realize that you have needs, maybe greater than what you think that you've been having. Like um, you probably have some more needs than you think. And if, if you were to have like an experience of I don't know, being in a cave for three days or being some kind of a life-threatening situation or something, it might open you up to realize that you, you need a lot more love than you think you do. And I think it's that thing inside of us that kind of gnaws at us inside that we all have trauma. And that, that's the thing that he said. He said he didn't have any childhood trauma. But I know that everyone, if they're born into this physical world, First, they have the trauma of believing that they're separate from God. And that's a big one, that you're out here alone. And then second one is that you have separation from your, your birth mother, that you had to leave the womb and smacked on the butt or whatever. And that, that's one that we, another one that we kind of bypass. And we don't really think about it. And for men to get circumcised, that's another one. So if any of those, those, those three things are pretty major things. So just, it's just taking a, taking a moment, just kind of feel into your heart and say, could there be something that I need greater than what I think? Or is there, is there a greater need for love that I didn't even think that I could get to? That's, that's what I was at is, I was occupying myself with stuff, with things, with activities to make, you know, to kind of bring in happiness and what I thought was love. But man, when you experience real love, when you experience being in love, not puppy love, not lust, not attachment, but real love, unconditional love with this person that you're with and the love of yourself, it just takes everything to, to a new level. So how do we find this out? How do we find out what our needs are so that we can line ourselves up with that? Because if we don't realize that we have needs, we're gonna, we're gonna be stuck in that line or what I would call in that room. I've talked about this before, about the holodeck. That, that like on Star Trek, they have this holodeck and then in the holodeck, you're in a certain place or a certain time, anywhere, anytime. And it seems like, you know, when I'm, when I'm living a life of distrust or dishonesty, I'm in the room of that and they will kind of, everything kind of is flavored with, it has the taste of that. So when someone doesn't know what their own needs are, they're in that room 
they're in on that line. They're writing that line of not knowing what their needs are, which is also not knowing what your boundaries are, not being able to trust. And how can you trust when you're living, you're not um, solid, grounded in who you are and what your needs are. So you're kind of out there and you're hoping that if you say yes to everybody, you'll get what you need. That's what I did. That's a people pleaser. So what I, what I found is that I needed to find out, first of all, that I, I had needs that weren't being met. That was a big one. Like it's a, it's a kind of a scary thing to, to realize that you have needs that aren't being met, but what if, what if they could never be met? And, you, and now you've discovered that you have needs that aren't being met. And you have this belief that, okay, now what? Well, things change when you start to go down this different line. And the other thing I needed to look at is why didn't I believe that I could get those needs met? Or why didn't I believe, even, even more critical, why didn't I believe that I deserved to get those needs met? And it all comes down to self-worth. It all comes down to guilt and shame. So if you've ever met anyone that is really confident and you know they take care of themselves and they're not a jerk, they they know what their needs are. They they like, why would I not meet my needs? You know, it's like, holy cow, you know, it's like they really know what they're doing. But for a lot of us, um, guilt and shame and um, not knowing what our needs are because we feel that we're not worthy of getting those needs met, um, it just kind of runs our life. It's in our system. And then there's other people that believe that. Um, they shouldn't have any needs. Like um, sometimes people that are uh, deeply into religion, some believe that um, they don't have to have needs because um, God is in their life. Well, God is in everyone's life and we all have needs. It's just kind of a, it's a kind of a known thing. You've got needs, you've got the need for, for water and air and food. And then there's more needs than that if you admit it. So um, what do I want to say about that? To deprive yourself of the needs because of some religious idea or some unworthiness idea is not really living. And it's, it's not doing real justice to God. You are here to expand. You're here to love. You're here to to feel and to receive. If you're not into receiving, that's that's only part of the equation. If you're just giving or just in service to God or something like that, you're not bringing in, you're not allowing to God to be within you. So if God is everything, if God is energy, if God is love, allowing that into your body, allowing into your life, now you're receiving. So there's that. So how do we find that out? Now that we know that you know, we do have needs and some of those needs haven't been met, but we don't know how to get there. Well, first of all, you know, find out what those are. And for me, I needed to kind of find out what my essence was so I could determine what my needs are. And what that means is I need to find out who I was at the core, who I was as, a, as, a, um, as an inner child. Uh, what did that inner child need? back then that I found a way to cope without, like, you know, keep myself busy or drugs or alcohol or, you know, activities, that kind of thing. So if I look back at my childhood and say, okay, what didn't I have? Like this guy, he didn't really have a lot of emotional support, emotional intelligence and nurturing and touch and all that stuff, but he learned how to just be smart and be intelligent, be really successful. But if he were to look back and say, not that my parents made a mistake or it's not their fault, but what was I missing? Yeah, I was missing that. I don't know, you think about some kind of, some cultures are really uh, into, into the family and really touching and, and giggling and singing and dancing and everything. And if you don't have that, you might be missing some of that, especially if you see that in some of your friends and some of your uh, other people that you know. So. My essence was, is that I'm here to shift the energy. I'm here to um, use alchemy of energy 
And uh, however that shows up, whether that's sanding wood or shining up metal or being with people and helping them elevate to a higher consciousness. And I love physical touch. I love quality time. I love being present. I love being in nature. And it's those things that kind of bring me back to my childhood. So if I spend a little time in that childhood before trauma, before my remembered trauma, I can start to get into what my needs may have been. There's this other uh, piece here, and it's um, believing that if I, if I start to focus on my needs, I'll become selfish and self-centered. And I know if you're a nice person, you think about that. And that's what I, that's what I would think about. It's, it's, I don't want to be an asshole, so um, I'll just be low profile, and I'll just be in the background here, and oh no, I don't need anything, which is complete bullshit, excuse me, but it is that you don't have any needs, and it's just, we do this because um, we're scared of what we may become, and uh, we don't want to be a burden, we don't want to believe that we have that we have needs that may not be able to be met. There's all this this fear around it. But what I found is that once we kind of narrow it down, hey, I need quality time, I need good food, or I need relationship, or I need uh, more sex, or whatever the thing is, it's to acknowledge that you do have those needs. And once you do, it's like um, God, the universe listens to that but it also listens to you saying you don't need anything. So it's like, okay, you don't need anything. So I'll just leave you as you are until we, we find out what that is and we start determining what our needs are. And then because we find out what our needs are, we find out what our boundaries of self are. And our boundaries of self are not meant to be necessarily protective boundaries, although they kind of do that a little bit. So when someone has strong boundaries, like, like that person that knows who they are and knows what they need, their needs are. And um, they kind of walk around like that. Nobody messes with them. You know, no one take a, takes advantage of that person, not only because they assert themselves as, in this way, it's the energy that they project out there. And like any abuser or somebody, they're just, they're going to feel that and they're not going to come up to that. So when we find out what our needs are, why we block those needs, where they come from, and start to focus on those and say, okay, I'm going to give myself the experience of getting those needs. I'm going to give myself the permission to have those needs be met. And for me, I needed to start doing things that were for me. I needed to start doing things that were exciting to me. And <clears throat> it was a struggle. It was, a, it was hard to like have that honest conversation with someone and say, I didn't really feel good with that, or I don't really want to go to that. And I'd rather do this over here. And still it comes up, you know, when people want me to certain, do a certain retreat or a certain workshop or a certain session. And uh, I'm not really excited about it. And I've got to let them know. But my fear was, if I'm really honest with someone and tell them how I really feel, I might lose their love. Or maybe they won't hire me or something or, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm going to lose something. But actually what we're doing is we're lining up with our authentic needs, with our authentic self. And when you're in your authentic self, you're completely, you're lined up with your soul and things start really working for you. And you ever wonder why these people get everything they need and all that kind of stuff? Those people are usually people that are really open and expressive with what their needs are. <clears throat> so think about that for a moment. Let's think about what your needs might be and how or why you haven't been getting your needs met. Now, well, there's some victim consciousness in there. I don't know. It's just what my life, I just don't get my needs met. I just get a, a raw deal or something. And that may be true, but believing that, continuing to believe that keeps you in that room. And I'm not saying to uh, start projecting these positive thoughts or positive information that's really not going to fix it. It's just 
what's going to fix it is to realize that you can have things, you can have your needs met, and find out why you believe that you couldn't. So first of all, remove the resistance to getting your needs met. Whatever's in the way, whatever, it's usually some belief, some thought. And then get clear on what your needs are. And if there's anything material, push, just let the material side go and say what the feeling of that material thing would give you. Like if you say you need, I need a safe place to live, I, I need a new home or something because I want to feel safe. That's where you go into, you go into the, the actual feeling that you want to feel. And there's only one part of you that really doesn't want these needs to be met. And it's your egoic self. So this is not really you that's saying this like this, like this guy that I was working with. He was telling me that he knew what love was and he didn't really have any other needs. That's the egoic self. That's, that's me, I'm smart enough. I'm too smart to, for that. I'm too smart to have emotional needs. If there's anything that says you don't have any need for love, that's an egoic self. That's a, that's a defense mechanism. It's a coping mechanism to try and protect you. I totally get it. We need to protect ourselves sometime. But when did that happen? Decades ago, probably. Is not really valid anymore. And if you need to use anger, use anger. Get freaking angry that you didn't get your needs met and then do something about it. Take an action, find out what your needs are and demand it from yourself, not from other people, but from yourself. This is my need, damn it. That's what I needed to do. I need to get a little bit pissed off at my own mind for keeping me in this people pleaser, not knowing what my boundaries are, not being able to receive. Really even spend some time looking at why would we not want to receive or what would be inside of that? We're worried about getting hurt. We're worried about losing something or being rejected. That was my thing was the fear of rejection. So if I put myself out there and had these knees and asked for what I wanted, what if I got rejected? Then I'd be crushed. But part of this practice is practicing it and asking for what your needs are and getting a little bit of rejection and then continuing on. And maybe that person can give you what you need. And that's what a lot of us do is that we, we go out there as a people pleaser and then we find out that we have these needs. And so we get attached into a relationship and we feel like, well, okay, now that we know what my need, I have this need and then they can't give it to us. And then we get crushed. But what's happened is that we are in a relationship, we've determined what our needs are, but this person is not able to give us those needs. So we do something about it. Either we work on that relationship or we move out of that relationship. But the most important thing is for you to give yourself those needs so you can kind of prime that pump and open up the channels to that. So if you go into a relationship with these needs, the person can't give them to you, but you've got a channel close to that, like a, what I'm talking about is a belief that moves in the way of that, is in the resistance to that, you're not in the right room. You can say you're not in the right relationship, but more importantly, you're not in the right room to receive it. So first, open up those channels. Once you open up those channels and remove, what I mean by that is to remove and let go of those old beliefs and old ideas and old thoughts that stand in the way of you getting what you need. And when, once that happens, then you put yourself in a different room, different holodeck. Things start changing. Start finding yourself getting your needs met. And everything applies to you, everything works with you so that you'll find out more deeply, more clearly what your needs are. And here's the result. 
The result of that is getting your needs met. Oh my gosh, being happy. Wow, no drama. Wow, love, such deep love, such deep experience that really feeds you and cultivates more love. Wow, that's possible. Yes, it is. Less illness, more happiness, more abundance, all those things, all the things are completely possible, but you got to get into the room of that, into the room of allowing that in abundance. You know, we all know people that are complaining to God and, and hating God. They blame God, taking this thing away from them and not giving us this thing. But that's what keeps them in that zone, in that room, that victim consciousness. And for someone like that, it's going to take a real big some kind of heart opening that it's, it's hard to um, convince people like that, that have been so hurt. And really, they've been hurt by their own thoughts. You know, the world kind of showed up in a way that caused them to have a certain thought about the thing. And their thoughts took them down. And they just spent so much time in that room that everything the world looked like that. And they said, if God really loved me, he, she would, would change things. That's not how it works. God doesn't give. God doesn't give away. Or God doesn't take away. God is in everything. But we need to be receptive to the love that's there. And that is the reason for all of our suffering not being able to receive that, to have some such deep pain, some such deep hurt that we blocked it off and that we feel justified. But you know what happens is, what doesn't happen is you don't get what you want. All that victim consciousness and the, and the complaining and the angriness, the anger, God never says, oh, I hear you. Okay, I'm going to give you everything now. <laughs> Sorry, that's just not how it works. There's not a, there's not a being that, that judges like that and says, oh, you've complained loudly enough, and I'm, so now I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> Could you imagine? We need to get into that vibration, into that frequency of consciousness to be able to receive that. I hope this helped and uh, I hope this moved things around enough so um, you can get into a different room if that's what you need. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day. I love you. Bless you.